Hey, Jorge, how's it going? Hey, it's going well, Sandy. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Um, so who are you? What do you do? Well, who is this guy? All right, so my name is Jorge, uh, and I currently am the Senior Digital Marketing Manager for Avocados for Mexico. I've been there for just about a year. Uh, and prior to that, I was in another corporate marketing role with uh, a beer company called Anheuser-Busch, pretty well known. And then prior to that, I spent and started my professional career at Richard Zerma. I was an account manager on Home Depot for five years at Richard Zerma, straight out of school. That's awesome. Okay, so tell us about Avocados from Mexico. What do you do there? What's your day-to-day? Yeah, good question. So my day to day, it's it's multifaceted, but I would say the probably 30 40% of my day to day is planning our campaigns for, for the months coming. Uh, so we have multiple time periods within the year that they're called planning uh, meetings where we literally look ahead on um, the calendar and plan what campaigns it's going to be. So the best example is probably Super Bowl, right? And this planning happened you know, probably six months before the actual Super Bowl in February. But, you know, we get into rooms, we, we brief our creative agencies, we have discussions on what the approach is. And then, you know, once we get an initial alignment, uh, especially from our leadership on, on a, a big campaign, then we go into execution. And then execution could be, you know, anywhere from a month to two months to, to uh, three months. So, so yeah, my day-to-day is basically working on these big campaigns, creative ideation. Uh, another good portion, I would say maybe... 15, 20% is just ongoing content creation, uh, especially since I'm in the digital team and a lot of what my team is, is tasked with is social media and everyone knows obviously social media, the, the, the growth and the importance of brands to be active on social. So I actually have a community manager that works directly underneath me in the office at Avocados from Mexico and we work very closely with, with Richard Zerma, our, our uh, social agency of record, but literally we'll see what's trending in a week. We'll see what's coming up, St. Patty's, Cinco de Mayo, and we'll come up with organic content as we call it just to be active in, in you know days like taco tuesday or or things like that so a lot of creativity there it's fun um and then yeah to finish out my rest of my day-to-day responsibilities would just be internal um you know management of, of either budget um you know internal meetings with not only our, our ceo and, and my boss but but internal meetings with other stakeholders within avocado so i work very closely with our shopper marketing team they have a lot of initiatives and we as the digital team try to support as much as possible um but but they have a lot going on and then the last department we uh, support is the food service industry which you know is also another area where avocados luckily um are doing pretty well and avocado toast has helped with that so so yeah i would say a lot of my day-to-day is to meeting with you know our food service partners and let's say they have a meeting coming up with chipotle one of our biggest uh, food service partners and when we come in as a digital team and said all right how can we maybe do some work with chipotle right and one a win-win scenario where they get good content we get good content and it benefits both brands so so in a quick nutshell uh, a lot of meetings a lot of uh, but a lot of creativity and a lot of fun stuff uh, working at Avocados. So let me ask you about the Super Bowl. Um, you guys won quite a few awards and ranked really high because of your social activations mm-hmm. and specifically for utilizing blockchain. So can we talk about blockchain yeah. and how did that come about? Yeah, I think, uh, and of course, huge kudos to, to someone you met, Yvonne uh, Kinzer, my, my uh, head of digital marketing, because from the very beginning, she, she figured out that in order for things to be relevant during such a a busy and cluttered time like Super Bowl, we really need to have something breakthrough. Eh? And usually it's it's a tech piece, right? A new app, a new technological innovation. Last year we did something with IBM Watson because because even though it's been out for a while, not a lot of brands play with uh, IBM Watson and we did that uh, last year. So this year, yes, it was the approach of blockchain where we're in a simple idea. It was how can we provide consumers with the ability to have a virtual avocado, right? Uh, so it was kind of revolutionary and a lot of, People in our company were still kind of, you know, confused on what exactly it meant, but but ultimately we were able to to provide value, a digital value to an avocado um, and to consumers, and people loved it, right? They were, you know, when we started the campaign, they were amassing in their digital wallet. They were coming together with a bunch of avocados, and the best example was probably like a Pokemon Go. It, Pokemon Go is very very different, but what what at least in an idea you could understand that if you go to a grocery store, it would tell you that there's avocados there and then therefore um, through through a digital experience you would add a digital avocado to your wallet that you can uh, basically later exchange for uh, for more entries into a, a broader sweepstakes 
Um, so yes, cool technology, new territory and a little uncomfortableness with that, but I think it, it did well and that it got people excited with, with a new tool like that. Yeah, I'm really disappointed I didn't win a tiara, by the way, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were, you know, and you know what people could do? They could actually either win the tiara or they can exchange for money. And we thought actually a lot of people were just gonna go straight for the money. No, people people wanted that tiara that we, that we promoted heavily as part of the AVO network. So yeah, it was, it was a hit. It's so fun. So tell us, um, what is Avocados from Mexico as a business model, if you will? As a business model. So great question. So a lot of people don't understand that we as Avocados from Mexico, we're a small company. We treat ourselves like a startup, um, less than 40 employees, but we're truly solely a marketing entity. So meaning, um, and I'm sure in a bunch of advertising classes you guys talk about, the consumer packaged goods companies like Procter & Gamble, PepsiCo, right, or, or a Nike or whatever example you may think of, they're all, for the most part, public held companies that, that are measured by direct sales, right? Like Nike.com that I sell how many shoes yesterday as opposed to today with us. We, we don't have that, that necessarily um, intricacy because we, as a company, mostly stand for marketing, right? So our, our marketing budgets are set by the USDA uh, and our job is to grow the industry of avocados, right? And, uh, you know, there, we do have, of course, a lot of partnerships and, and conversations with Walmart, HEB, whatever it is. But uh, again, our, our retail shopper team is not necessarily judged on Hey, how many more avocados did you sell? Because our main goal is to just market uh, the origin of avocados being avocados from Mexico. And you guys are a nonprofit, right? Correct. We are a nonprofit. Uh, a lot of people don't know that as well. But uh, the, the science goes that for, uh, for every dollar or every avocado imported into the U.S., a cent goes into our marketing budgets. And, and of course, uh, that's how we do the campaigns that we do. But, but we're in, in terms of classification, yes, we're a nonprofit. So if I may, I would love to ask you, um, right now we're involved with this COVID-19 outbreak. Um, what is Avocados from Mexico's approach? And um, obviously being sensitive to the time and the importance of the situation, um, what are your thoughts about marketing right now? Yeah, great question. I think right now we live in, in you know, very... Uh, I guess sensitive times and and one of the first approaches we did as a company especially as a digital team is 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 pause a lot of campaigns we kind of took the step back and said you know right now it's not as important for our brand to have consistent um i guess uh campaigns or or, or messaging just because you know people aren't receptive to that right now and, and i'm sure you guys talk about this in your advertising classes but we always are trying to think what the consumer is thinking, right? So we put ourselves in their shoes and we know that right now, right now maybe they don't necessarily want to see a Cinco de Mayo ad with, with a lot of people gathering together because people are not gathered, right? They're, they're quarantined and, and that's what we have to do as a, as a nation to, to get through this, this crisis, right? But, but at the same time, there is opportunities for us to, to add value, you know? And, and our digital team, for example, the other day was, um, you know, dusting off some, some recipes or some, some how-tos on how to wash an avocado how to basically keep an avocado fresh either in the freezer or just to maintain an avocado thinking again thinking what is the consumer thinking well right now they're staying at home they probably have groceries that they're um, holding for a couple of days like how can we still add value because that's how I think people respond more more positively instead of you know us trying to force a specific messaging when it's not the right time yeah timeliness is a huge key factor I think for everybody especially pushing any campaigns right now um, and just being super sensitive to what's going on around the world and the amount of suffering that's happening. So I think providing useful resources is a great way to engage your audience still, but also be really useful and relevant in this time, which is really bizarre. Um, and then if I'm, let's back up a second. So Avocados from Mexico works with many partners, including Lerma and other teams to produce like your Super Bowl and other campaigns as well. So can you talk to us about how do you integrate and work collaboratively to produce all of this work? Definitely. Yeah. So one of the back to my day to day, one of the things we do is we have pretty not not daily, but weekly touch bases with our agencies. Um, and a lot of the times in, in situations like this, we 
we again take a step back and look at the consumer about you know look at sentiment abroad and see if it's the right time or not but the collaboration really happens when you know partners at Richards Lerma I work very closely uh, daily with the digital strategy team uh, Pancho Cardenas and Mike Jones and essentially you know they're they're the first to be like oh well what if we try this right what if we you know maybe have a avocados from Mexico health day uh, where we're doing a live stream with a bunch of healthy recipes and health um, you know health tips and things like that and then of course we love the idea we think it's right then we go to our other partners right and, and it takes a village truly right so so a lot of the times learn is our day-to-day -day strategy and day-to-day -day, you know execution but a lot of times when it comes to content or, or web development we have other partners um, that that work very very closely with, with Richard Zerma so what we do is as the client kind of in the middle is we connect the dots right so we obviously take an idea um, you know start start uh, and it's kind of a cool process we'll start getting things rolling but at the same time in the parallel path we have to uh, you know go up the ladder and talk to our management about these ideas right we can't just you know go go rogue and do all the campaigns that we want so it's a cool it's a cool process where of course uh, we like to use the analogy of building a ship right so as as we work with our, our partners to build this ship to to kind of you know come up with a new campaign or a new idea on the spot for for in the next weeks or for later in the year while we're building it we're also kind of you know, making sure management's good with it, making sure uh, other people not not close to uh, to the idea give feedback and, and you know optimize it, and then you know of course what ends up happening is things change a little bit, right? Uh, and that's just part of the nature of advertising and marketing is things will change. One idea will maybe mutate into something even better, or an idea has to completely you know pivot or change directions just because of, of internal you know feedback or. or uh, cautious cautious points so so yeah it's, it, it does take a village like i said and a lot of times it's a lot of calls a lot of a lot of uh conversations to be had but uh with all of our partners it's kind of connecting the dots and then making sure we we move in the right direction and in that for this is a business communications class um yeah. so it seems to me that you practice quite a bit of business communications in your day-to-day -day. um any words of advice or kind of ideas for students about to graduate regarding this specifically? <laughs> yeah, I could give a bunch. I'll, I'll give a bunch quickly. It'll be like rapid hour. I think one is, is just be okay with the fact that a lot of business communication is done on PowerPoint or, you know, keynote or whatever it is. And that's just a reality, you know, and, and a lot of people struggle with that. But if you want to sell your ideas and if you want to pitch what you want to, you have to be able to illustrate it quickly and in a very visually appealing way right and and a lot of the times you know we we go back to to powerpoint um but that's where you know you have great creative partners like an agency who can make the powerpoints look extra pretty right so that's one business communication is a lot on 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 powerpoint and then another one and and uh, as i mentioned in my experience i've been agency side and client side and and both of these uh, sides really need to understand the importance of a brief uh, so the brief is so, so, so key. I, I've been in so many rooms where if it was a weak brief, it was a, you know, okay brief, then ultimately that ends up affecting the creative. The creative ends up being eh, okay, right? So the better the brief, the better the creative. So that's a huge thing. And either you're a, a planner or a digital strategist, uh, you know, whatever the people actually working on the briefs, or if you're a creative guy, a girl, and you, you're about to get briefed, make sure to be really, really, uh, you know, uh, stringent on the fact that the briefs need to be really, really good, have a lot of good insights, have a lot of good context, uh, need to be inspiring, right? Some of my best briefings uh, were on PowerPoint, but were maybe two, three slides, not a lot of data, but just images that evoke ideas. And I've always said that if you don't have a briefing where there's questions asked, or if, if ideas don't already come up on the spot, then it wasn't a good briefing. Uh, and that's that's a good thing to kind of keep as a rule of thumb, right? So so again, PowerPoints, briefings, uh, and then I mean now this is kind of obvious, but but um, another thing I like to do is is keep a Google Doc of of ongoing ideas, right? So so what I mean by this is you know we have Google Docs for all types of things, right? But I have basically my my treasure chest of ideas that I'm kind of working on and baking on and maybe it's not right time maybe I haven't found a way to do it it could be you know a new influencer uh, platform it could be a new Super Bowl approach and tech tool that we haven't used and, and that we could maybe try so what I do is I keep them in this doc and I'll you know don't look at it every day but I'll keep ideas there and I kind of uh, you know go, go look at it later because the, what I've seen is sometimes 
the best ideas is all about timing, right? And, and while this cool idea, I get really excited about it and our agencies get all pumped up and we have, we sold it into management, but sometimes it still might not be the right time to, to go live with it. And it's better like, Hey, let's keep it. And then when the right time comes, let's go look back at that document, see what other ideas, what other uh, questions we had on, on that. And then, and then we, we uh, launch it at the right time. Epic. Awesome. Great response. Um, <laughs> last question for you. So, Jorge, why do you love advertising? So what is it about the advertising marketing space that sort of brought you into this industry and what do you love about it day to day? Well, I'll say uh, that the first thing that got me into advertising was definitely Mad Men, right? We all, who didn't want to be a freaking Don Draper, right? In the golden ages of advertising. But no, I did internships when I was an undergrad and then I loved it. And then I was like, I, I really got to taste you know, the, the whole process of briefing, concepting, uh, you know, pitching to, to an even new business. I got to do some new business uh, even at Lerma and that was really fun, right? Because you basically see the whole advertising process, super accelerated, super stressful, late nights, but it's the whole process in one, you know? So um, from there, what I really started to appreciate and actually someone at the Richards Group, Pete Lempert, told me on day one of training said, you know, when you're in advertising, you're in the, the business of selling ideas. That's what you're in, right? And the way he framed it in that way, right, where it's a business and ultimately what your product is, is, is ideas, right? Uh, and of course we had later uh, Chris Smith and other creative guys be like, oh yeah, this, this idea, this, this is our baby, right? Like don't, when you guys give feedback to our ideas, you know, this is our baby, so watch it, you know? And, and obviously you get to appreciate more ideas, but, but to your question of, of what, I love about advertising is, is I'm passionate about ideas. I'm, I'm passionate about these, these ideas that, that really break through the clutter and spread. Right. Uh, and, and sometimes that is controversial, a, a Nike Colin Kaepernick campaign, you know, obviously that's, they, they had their route and, and did what they needed to do um, to, to show the world what they stand for, or you don't have to go controversial. Right. But, but there's so many cool ideas, content examples that, that just either inspire you or, or just make you feel emotion. Right. And that's why I love advertising, because advertising at the end of the day, it creates a feeling. Right. Um, and then, you know, there's a lot of um, uh, campaigns and advertising that don't do that. And then, you know, that, that they, they have the reasons. But I think the best advertising evokes emotion. Uh, that's what I love about it. So we, we at Avocados live to you know, think, all right, how can we make the consumers feel something of value, feel emotion uh, just so that they can, you know, live their days uh, with with something else. Right. Awesome. This has been so much fun. Thank you so much for talking to our students. Hopefully you'll get to come and chat with us in person sometime sooner than later. Um, I'd love to. Once this is over, count me in. I'll go there and talk in person and take any questions. Thank you so much.